path has got to be the one that resonates most deeply with you. So there's no question that a lot of the people that I work with, whether it's clients, or even when I look at my son, right? You know, I have an incredible son. I mean, he has so many traits of me, but he also has so many traits of my wife. And we are both, and I say this with blessing, we are both very different people, very different operating styles, very different human beings, very different ways of showing love, very different ways of actually being successful. And you can see those traits. And then one of the things I think we sometimes tend to do, whether you're a business coach, whether you're a father, sometimes we have to let go of what worked for us. Well, this- Welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness and Fulfillment Talk podcast, where we bring to you the most successful, happy, fulfilled gentlemen from around the world who have been able to conquer themselves, their life, their marriage, and their businesses. You will be learning from four dimensional gentlemen who have cracked the code to the science of having it all. The question is, how can married entrepreneurs with kids become gentlemen, achieve true freedom, and build a successful, happy, and fulfilled life, marriage, and business? This show will give you the answer for that. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I'm your host, and you're welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, Fulfillment Talk podcast. Hello, beautiful people. So I'm excited to be here with you with another episode of the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk with Alex Ramirez. And I have a very special gentleman that we're going to be diving deep into to find out how he has been able to conquer himself, his life, his marriage, and his business. But before I introduce him, really quick, I just want to give a big shout out to every one of you who has been leaving comments and reviews on the major podcasting platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, and to those who have been watching on YouTube as well. Thank you very much. If you like this episode and you get some value out of it, I want to ask you to Share it with one person since this is how we grow. This is how we spread our message. This is how we motivate, inspire, and bless other people. And I know 99% of you probably won't do that, but the 1% of you who do are the ones who make all the difference. So to you, I say thank you. And today I have Alex Hun. I don't know if I, I, if I said that right, man. Kim, but you're good. Couldn't. It's okay. You wouldn't be the first. So <laughs> Alex, and he's a husband, father, and entrepreneur. And he has, he, he was born to lead, right? That, that's, that's, that's his purpose. He was born to lead. And he has been able to help thousands of clients across 35 countries. And he helps them, he helps his clients design programs that are going to scale to help hundreds or even thousands of people. He has been um, featured, in, featured and interviewed in Forbes, Entrepreneur, BuzzFeed and, BuzzFeed. and his mission is to see every human to human business leaders grow into the persons they desire to be without limitations of time, money, or fear. So this gentleman was born to lead and he's helping other gentlemen grow into the persons they desire to be so that they can lead as well. So Alex, thank you very much for being here, man. I really appreciate it. And I'm excited. Yeah, I'm pumped, Alex. I'm so happy to be here. And the audience that you speak to, these incredible fathers out there, I'm so honored for you to take time out of your day to listen to this episode with the people with the same name. Alex is here. Thank you. Yeah. So, man, the first thing I do with my guest is put them on the line and ask them to tell us a little bit about themselves and their entrepreneurial journey in 60 seconds or less. Sure. Go ahead. I would say for me, if you met me, a nice guy, family guy, laid back, nobody would ever expect me to be the type of business leader in this world, going all over the country, working with thousands of clients personally, but having 30,000 people that I speak to on a week to week basis. I grew up on a farm. I grew up in an area where basically you were supposed to get a job and work for 40 plus years. No question I had some incredible role models in my life from my parents, from the people that are in my world. But at the end of the day, there was always that voice. There was that gut feeling inside of me to do something different. And ultimately, it led me down to paths such as training my ass off to try to make the Olympics in swimming. And while that didn't happen, it opened up the opportunities of what it really took to be successful, to understand that, listen, I didn't have the natural talent of a Michael Phelps to be maybe the best swimmer in the world. But damn it, there is a part of me that has a gift, that has a genius, that has a talent. We call it success DNA. And for me to tap into that and why I love business is because you get to find out what that talent is and you can create any business around that. 
And I'm grateful to have found mine. And I know so many out there can do just the same, regardless of what somebody told you, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of how you grew up, you have everything it takes to be. And that's why I'm here, grateful to be here, honored to be here, and hopefully serve many fathers, regardless if you own a business or not today. That's great, man. Um, that's exciting to hear. Like I, I've found my thing too. I found my, 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 my genius as well. And I am creating a business around it, right? Helping and impacting people uh, so that they can become the best version of themselves and more, more, um, more accurately so that they can become gentlemen. So I can totally relate with that. Um, so, man, I'm curious. What was that? So you said you, you, know, you were training for the Olympics to swim and everything, and you realized that you didn't have that natural talent that perhaps you know, Michael Phelps does have. You didn't have that, but you, did it, you, you found something in the process, right? In the, in the process of like failing, right? And you know, for, the, for the people who are not watching, I'm doing like air, quote, air, quote, air quotations, right? Um, so what was that thing that you found? The thing about swimming, and the thing about, I believe, success is this understanding that the lessons you learn, and obviously we always talk about mistakes, we talk about failures, but I really believe the lessons you learn, it's not about what you learn, it's how you're going to apply them to the next stage of your career, the next stage of your life, the next stage of the people you're going to serve. For me, when it came to my swimming career, when it came to what I learned, I realized that one of the easiest things that you can do and one of the things you control is how you show up, what you do when you show up, and most importantly, find pure happiness and positivity in yourself because of the benchmarks that you created that you have overcome for yourself. And while I never obviously hit the finite times or the swimming competitions that Michael Phelps or any Olympian made, I do know that one of the things I learned for myself that is important thing for every father, every business person to know is that we have to first and foremost start with our own personal records. What can I do today and how can I do that better tomorrow? How can I do it better the next day? Because at the end of the day, really, what does it matter if you ultimately have the biggest business in the world or just an average size business? What does it matter if you are here or there? What matters simply is, is are you finding out what you're able to do and trying to beat it every single day? That's where I think happiness comes from is that progress. I think also happiness comes from the idea of growth and knowing that you can actually have control over that process of getting to a better state for yourself. So for me, swimming is really one of the purest sports that says, I have a time. I'm trying to beat that time the next day and the next day. Um, and that's, that's really helping a lot of areas in my life. you actually uh, say that the purpose for us as humans is expansion we like every human should be on a mission and that mission is to become better and healthy and to try more today than you were yesterday so that's basically what you're saying right to like try to beat yourself and like that 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 like that idea of wanting to grow, wanting to beat yourself, wanting to be better and better is our purpose as humans, right? And that, you know, from that, you get, you get happiness. Uh, that, that, that's awesome. I love that, right? Um, man, so when did you first realize this? I was always a, a kid that was almost naive. I was always been somebody who... For all of us, you know, we understand that we have influences in our lives and there's a lot of noise. And obviously in 2021, we've got social media that is piling down on this. But at some level, I always can remember my mom yelling across the, the counter at me saying, Alex, pay attention, because I was always that kid that could just focus. I was always that kid could just be like, I would get wrapped up in the book I was reading, or I get wrapped up in the TV show I was watching. If I was outside, uh, imagining that I was in the championship game, I was always just so wrapped up into whatever I was doing. And so I know that's part of my natural ability, which also says that multitasking or doing a bunch of things all at the same time is not my natural ability. 
But that idea of focus and that idea of just being able to focus on what I control myself, I found the more that I actually focus on what others were doing and trying to chase them, it brought less happiness, it brought less joy, and ultimately actually brought less success in my life. And the moment that I actually stopped you know, taking the trainings and taking the insights as not how they were doing, but more importantly, how I interpreted it for myself and how I wanted to apply it, it gave me more ownership of where I want to be. It gave me the more of a, it's my responsibility. And I know that came from a lot of things from the idea of growing up on a farm, got to put food on the table. You got to grow, you got to grow your vegetables. You got to be able to do that from the point of swimming. You don't have a teammate to protect you. You don't have the team that can actually balance you out. You're in the lane by yourself. So I think I've always been in situations where it's like you are taking ownership of your success and your failures. And when you're failing, you can't let yourself just go down in the dumps, go down in the drain. You got to protect your confidence and understanding that when those mistakes happen, those lessons, for as much as we hear people say, you got to learn from it, et cetera, et cetera. I believe you also have to unattach yourself from just the emotion of failure and the emotion of success. So you can say, well, what can I do better? What can I do to feel good about this or get to that next stage? So that's been something that's just, I think it's been ingrained with me, both in terms of sports I picked, my the way I grew up, and also what I found has worked well for me over the years and for many of the clients. Cool, man. It sounds like, I mean, I don't know if I'm, if I'm right, but it sounds like you are big into like getting to know yourself. Like you're, in, you're big into exploring who you are, into not only exploring who you are, but like, you know, creating who you are, right? being authentic. It sounds like you're, Big into uh, you know, like look, like reflecting on your life, something that you have mentioned a couple of times now. So, can you dig a little bit deep into that? Deeper into that? I'll use business as an example. And one of the biggest mistakes I see in business is that most people try to fit themselves into a business model that somebody else created as opposed to trying to build a business around what their natural talents, gifts, and strengths are. I also think it's the same thing when it comes to fatherhood. You know, I am, I'm not this, let's, I'll, I'll be frank. I'm not the father that's a, I'm not a screamer. I'm not a yeller. I'm not the person who's going to make you look down and try to really scare the crap out of you. I'm the father who's going to make you like, if you do something wrong, I'm like, I'm going to say I'm disappointed in you. Those are the types of ways I'm going to be. I feel at the end of the day, when we try to do something, the, it doesn't matter the path, but the path has got to be the one that resonates the most deeply with you. So there's no question that a lot of the people that I work with, whether it's clients, or even when I look at my son, right? You know, I have an incredible son. I mean, he has so many traits of me, but he also has so many traits of my wife. And we are both, and I say this with blessing, we are both very different people, very different operating styles, very different human beings, very different ways of showing love, very different ways of actually being successful. And you can see those traits. And then one of the things I think we sometimes tend to do, whether you're a business coach, whether you're a father, sometimes we have to let go of what worked for us. Well, this is how I did it, or this is what worked for me, or, or look at me, and this is how it, it, it doesn't matter. The question is, is do you have the empathy enough to really step back? to put yourself in their shoes and ask them what they feel, what they think. And it, no matter what the answer is, trusting them, intuitively, they get it. Intuitively, they will figure it out. Intuitively, that over time, in that way, you're not only going to find greater success, but more importantly, you're going to find more joy in the process. So there's no question that I think there definitely needs to be more of an introspective aspect, no matter how you do it. I wish more people took that time to not just be more introspective about themselves, but more importantly, allow others to be introspective about how they're going about it. Because the way you're going to build your business, Alex, and the way you're going to grow it, listen, there's ways to get coached and trained and guided and everybody, right? But at the end of the day, there's going to be things that are going to be unique to you because we are the unfair advantage in our businesses and in our life. Cool. Is that what you make people realize with Born Leader? That they are the unfair advantage? Every day. Born leaders, man. This, we got the shirt here, born leader. Got to get your address. We'll send you one. But by the end of the day, you know, this idea that the biggest question I get, and I'll tell you the two things I always find is hilarious. But the two things people ask me is, is number one, Alex, I don't know if I'm a born leader. I don't know if I'm a leader. I, I've never led before. I've never moved people. I, I'm a shy. I'm an introvert. You know, right? They, all, everything, everything that comes up. But at the end of the day is, listen, 
you're going to lead in a way that works for you. And we've developed actually archetypes to help you kind of discover a little bit more simply what your leadership style is, but more importantly, how do you best lead as an operator? If I sat here, Alex, and tried to just sit here and not throw inspiration and motivation and try to show some passion with my speech, that's not my style. If I try to be bland, that, that's, that would be crazy for me. So we got to find what works for us. But I also think the second thing is, is that when see people talking about like, listen, leaders are not born, Alex, they're made. And my answer to that is simply yes. But we also have to understand that leaders need to grow their skills, grow their practice, just like a basketball player. You can be a natural basketball player, but you got to work on your shooting. You got to work on your dribbling. You got to work on your rebounding there. And just as a leader, listen, everybody's born to lead. But if I'm born to lead this way, why am I training myself in this path? It's like taking a quarterback. I'm a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. It's like taking good old Ben Roethlisberger and putting him in all the drills with all the defensive linemen. It, it's not mm -hmm. going to work for him. His talents is as a quarterback. So we first and foremost, that's why that introspective piece is important. It's why we need that reflection time. It's why even as a father for myself, you know, when I look at my son, I, you know, even at two years old, I let him make decisions. I give him that space to mess up, jump off the 10 foot ledge that almost broke his leg. Right. I mean, it just happens there. And obviously I want him, I want him to be safe. But we do need to understand that part of our leadership is giving ourselves space to grow space to learn and also space for others to do the same. That's amazing, man. And I mean, you know, I have something called, I mean, I didn't, I didn't embed those skills. I just call them like that, but the gentleman success skills, which is sales and marketing leadership and recruiting, right? So leadership is a crucial skill. If you want to make it big in business, if you want to make a big as a husband, if you want to make it big as a father, right? So becoming a, a leadership, right? Stepping into your uniqueness and into your greatness as, as, as who you are and being able to lead in your own way is something very important. So you mentioned that you help people, uh, you know, get started in leadership by finding out the archetype, right. Of like what kind of leader they might be. So how do you do that? Yeah. So obviously for us, from a scalability perspective, the ability to do it for a lot of people, of course, I could sit here and ask you some questions and I could basically pinpoint probably like a 97% accuracy, but we do actually have a test that you actually can go through. And I'll tell you the four archetypes. I'll leave that as the teaser here in a second. But really when it's coming to the idea of this success DNA, it's very simply this, is that all of us are intuitively going to go in one direction. If we really let go of this idea of thinking over things, a lot of times if you say, hey, blue or black, You'll say an answer quickly, right? Dog, cat, whatever it is, we, we instantly do this. And the thing about leadership is that I unfortunately feel there's a lot of leadership trainings out there that are saying, well, you got to be a servant in leadership, or you got to be authoritative leadership, or you've got to be uh, an empathetic leader, or all these different things. Like, this is the best way to do it. And at the end of the day, the question is this, is why do we have to pigeonhole people? Why can't we, more importantly, go to where they are today and help them develop that skill? That's success DNA to me. And we talk about these four archetypes, and a lot of them are going to sound like you'll probably know somebody as soon as you hear, as soon as you hear these four archetypes, but you're going to know that person and you're going to say, oh yeah, that's that person. That's the person who I think of. The first one that I talk about is simply the developer. And the developer is that person who is just so damn good at getting the best out of other people. It's the coach. It's the person, person. who's able to go to almost any situation and people feel like, man, they asked me questions, man, they actually got me to think more, man, they got me to really almost like think about things deeper. They almost pulled something out of me that I didn't realize was in myself. There are these natural developers. I think of John Wooden, natural, natural developers, developers that literally no matter what skill they're teaching you, they just are so good at getting the best out of others. The second one is the arch architect. And the architect is that person who, the person who everyone has big ideas and these amazing visions and all the big things they want to do, but how do I do it? 
how do I, how do I actually get that done? How do I make that a reality? And the architect is the person who can say, listen, I see it and I know exactly how to plan it. I know exactly where you should step. I know exactly what you look like and you should be going here in the direction and stuff like that. That's leading. Leading is really, listen, you understand, we always hear this idea, leaders are achievers. That's an architect. An architect is a person who's beautifully can be lay out the structure, the plan, understands people's talents really well and be able to put them in the right place. The third person, which is my natural, my natural style, you probably can tell, is the motivator. This is the person that simply can get others to say yes. They can get them to say yes to themselves, yes to their goals, yes to their dreams. Often in the business world, we think of them as salespeople, but let me tell you something that's typically, typically not, not understood, understood about the motivator. The thing about the motivator that most people don't understand is that the motivator doesn't have to be high energy or extrovert. What they're really good at is being able to speak in a way that you always agree with them. You're like, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I agree with that person. Yeah, that's, I, that's, yeah, that's right. That's right. Almost all the time. The motivator doesn't matter what their energy level is. You just agree with them. They almost like, and they almost make you go, you know what? I, I have been putting off that weight loss program. Yeah, you know what? I've been putting off that, that, that business I want to get started. Yeah, I'm going to go do it. So that's the motivator. And then finally, what we think of as the holy grail, but really it's just, again, another leadership archetype is the visionary. And the visionary is very simply this. It's the person who can look down the road and anticipate what's coming next. This idea that the visionary is the CEO of a company, the visionary is this like unsung hero. Listen, it's a skill as well. So yes, there are people that are naturally talented. They're always looking five years ahead, 10 years ahead. They're almost more excited about what's coming down the road as opposed to what they're doing today. But the visionary is always in this kind of higher level thinking process. And higher level simply just means is they're always thinking about what is the opportunity that lies ahead in the future. That's the visionary. All leadership archetypes are very important. They all actually are skills that you should develop, but ultimately organizations, and truly how I think you lead your communities, how you lead your families, how you lead your youth sports team, you've got to know what your natural archetype is so that you can start from there and ultimately build a support system around that. Cool. So then at the beginning, you were talking about like uh, intuitively, right? So I'm guessing that your, you know, your test, the test that you take people through so that they can find what our type of leader leaders they are is, you know, a test of questions, which they have to answer intuitively without thinking too much about it. Right. Yes. And, um, I found this thing, I, I heard it from, uh, so, so he's like, yeah, like whenever you're trying to make a decision, right. And, and you have two things that, you know, like which one you would like to do. Just, you know, without thinking, just flip a coin, assign, assign one, to one of the one side of the coin. And then if depending on the side of that, that it lands, that the coin lands on, you know, that's the, that's the one that you're going to pick. And if you like feel like, oh, that's not, not the one that I wanted, mm -hmm. there, there you go. You have your answer. Right. So I've actually done that. And in, 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 um, it helps me, you know, like it helps me find out like what I actually wanted in the first place intuitively without actually me thinking. Right. Because if you think too much, too much about it, you're like. You never end. Like it's like a never ending, uh, you know, like cycle of, of, of thinking what's going to go wrong, what, what can go right, how should I do it and stuff. And, and you just get stuck in there. So, yeah, man, like doing it intuitively. All right. So for everyone, I'm going to we're going to put your link on the description of the video so that, you know, people who are interested in finding out what type of leaders they are, uh, we're going to put the link so that they can go there. And just for you listening, remember, do it intuitively. Don't think too much. Just go with what feels right in, in the moment. So. That's amazing, man. And um, no wonder I'm agreeing with you, right? You're, you're the motivator. Right? <laughs> so uh, let's see, which one, which one? Do, I don't know, man. I think I'm either the motivator or the visionary, right? I'm always thinking ahead. I'm always looking ahead. And uh, yeah, so thank you for the insights, man. So of course, man. when it comes to leadership, right? I have my own thoughts on this. What do you think about building relationships? In what regards, I always love this question. I get this a lot, but what do you mean by building relationships? So I see building relationships and I, I realized it not long ago. Uh, and I really was able to realize the value of building relationships. Right? And I, I, I see it like I have a picture in my mind of how it works, right? So you let, let's say that, you know, chess, a chess game, you have your own board, your own chess 
support, mm -hmm. right? And you're playing your game. You're running your business. You're running your life. You're running your marriage. Um, and you have the pieces in your chessboard, right? The pieces that you move, you make moves and stuff, right? But someone else, they have their own chessboard. Someone else, they have their own chessboard. I have my own chess. So like what we're doing right now, this might not seem like, oh, you know, it might feel like oh, I'm wasting one hour of my time or something. But right now, they have given us the time to like build a relationship. And I have my board, my chess board with pieces that I'm going to be moving with pieces that I'm thinking about moving in the future. And you have your own. And who knows, you know, like 10 years from now, I'm going to be really ultra successful. And I know that, right? 10 years from now, you're going to be even more successful. And, and you probably are certain of that as well. From now, you know, I have this piece. I'm like, you know, I go through like the relationships that I have through, you know, like the, the, the chess that I've connected with, you know, from other people. And I notice move that I'm trying to make, right? So now I, like, the only thing that I have to do is be like, hey, Alex, and look, I'm trying to do this, this, and that, and I'm trying to move this piece right here, and I don't have that piece. Is there any chance that you can send it to me? You send it to me, right? So this relationship could be worth millions of dollars in the future, but we don't know it. So that's basically, you know, I don't, and I don't know if you were able to like picture it and really like visualize this, uh, what I just said and, and what I said to describe the power of relationships. So what's your take on that, man? Yeah, I talk about relationships, actually a deeper subject that goes to culture and culture simply is that invisible link that creates a group to work as one. You know, my, my wife and I, you know, it's not you parent and I parent, we parent together. And we parent in a way to make sure that we are raising the best son that we possibly can. You know, my team of five people that are in my company, in addition to the 10 investments I have, and I think there's hundreds of employees, you know, in that, that I advise on a day-to-day -day basis, right? It's not that they're separate entities as people. It's about not, and they only have all the same values or they have the same interests. It's literally saying in this particular situation as a relationship, how do we come together to work as one? This idea of relationship building, I think is so important, but I believe it's also so important to understand where you stand in this world and make sure you don't have your truths that you believe. People that come into that, that ultimately they're your core beliefs or your core values. And ultimately there, you gotta be cautious of who you ultimately let into that next inner circle. So I always tell people when it comes to my relationship building, I've got really three circles. So the first circle for me is literally, they are, you know, call it family, you know, and family is not just, you know, by blood, it's by people that are literally, they are literally the people that have seen me in my worst. They are the people that I would share everything with in the entire world. And I keep that circle for me very small because those people have to earn not only that trust, but also more importantly, I know that at some point being a public figure, being uh, in, in this world, we got to protect ourselves. We got to have time for just ourselves, for our own space. The next, the next space, space, which is pretty much where most people are in my world, and I, I would say like honestly 80% fit into it, is people that I am willing to always be around with. I'm happy to be in their world. And those are, you know, the 30,000 on my email list. Those are the thousands of clients. Those are the people like you, Alex, right? These are the people in my world that they get to see like 80% of me. You know, I'm holding, there's 20% of me I'm holding back. But there's, but these are the people that literally, I, it's not like I'm hiding anything. I just literally, this is who I am. I love you as a people. I believe what you're doing, whether it's as a business owner, whether it's from friends, but they're in my world. They're in my world and I love being around them. But then the finally, there's those 20%. And these are the people that I truly would never, don't want to build a relationship with. People that have values that I just could never agree with. Values that really hurt, you know, the core of my being. And even as much as I can try to understand and appreciate and empathize with, I want to protect my circle and my area and myself. Because at the end of the day, if we can't protect, can't protect our own comps, we can't protect our own soul, if we can't protect ourselves, then ultimately we're not going to be able to show up for those people that are leaning on us, whether it's as a leader, as a father, as a husband, as a, as a friend, 
Like we got to be able to protect that. So for me, relationship building is actually not just the idea of, hey, I'm going to be building relationship with everyone. The idea is simply saying, this is what I stand for. Within the first couple minutes, do we do we vibe? Do we share? Is there that instinct like, yes, we are in the same world. Great, you're in. And that's where I think we got to be more cautious. I think we're going to be more cautious of that relationship building. It's not just saying, hey, I want to build a relationship with everyone. It's saying, as you've said so beautifully, the gentleman, the people that are truly as fathers trying to go down that route. Because the people that don't want to probably grow are the people that are not going to listen to this incredible podcast and this incredible message that you have there. And maybe someday, hopefully they come. But as of right now, you're protecting the people that are here and learning, just like I'm doing with my audience and my world. So for me, relationship building is a combination of being open for everybody, but understanding where your boundaries are. Cool. I love that idea, man. So it comes down to clarity, right? Being clear on and being clear. Right, which is you apply to other things such as a to do list, go and who you are and are not aligned with what you want to achieve. So that's amazing, man. I love it. I love, I, you know, I love being clear on who you let in and who, um, that I think about, you know, so you mentioned like culture and how, uh, and, 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 and this idea of being like one. So like me and my wife, not, not like I parents and you parents know. So like, right. So in your team, so you and your team are like one, right. So there's this thing that I believe, right. For example, when you're culture, let's say that you're trying to build a culture of happy people. Right, which goes back to, to, to what you said, it validates what you said, or I don't know. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think you need me about you, but you know, it's just an idea. Uh, so like if you're trying to build a, a culture, happy people. And not try to and trying to build them into something that they're not. What do you think about that? I apologize. You broke up a lot, so I heard literally nothing. Do you mind just re-asking the question there? I I just asked. Alex, let's see. You there? Can you hear me, man? I can hear you now. now. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me and see me? Okay. I, I see you now. Yeah, you're kind of uh, shaky, but you're, you're good on my... I mean, I can hear you at least. That's the important thing. You're muted if uh, on my end. Um, we have a couple of more. All right. There, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Alex, can you hear me now? You're good. Yep. I did hear you. Now I can't hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for, uh, for this stuff that is happening. That's so, okay. I'm gonna edit that part out. 
to finish. Okay. You back, man? Uh, All righty. So, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay, I can yeah, hear I'm you back. now. There, you? I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, man, can I go ahead and ask you the first question? Yeah, go for it. Five questions. Yeah, go All for right. it. So, the first question is: If you could travel back in time, if you could travel back in time to give your eighteen-year-old self some advice, what would you say to him? 18-year-old Alex was stressed out. 18-year-old Alex didn't know if everything's going to work out. He had big dreams and big goals and big life changes. And he thought, and could I do it? Is it capable? What's maybe I'm so far behind. And the advice I would have given Alex at that point is like, Alex, take a deep breath and just trust yourself. And I feel that a lot of times we over- it's, you know, listen, I'm, I'm 39 and, you know, I, I, I was at uh, my, my nephew's little baseball game. I'm like, oh my gosh, these kids are so young. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, they're, they're like teenagers too. And I think there's always this idea that from, my, and I truly think it's ego. We want to give advice like here, do this, do this, do this, but like, let them ask you for it. And I think the point is, is that I really want them to remind themselves that, listen, just go think less and do more and trust yourself. It will all work out. That'd be the advice I would have given him. I think I lost you again, Alex. I think you're muted. <laughs> okay, this is getting okay. The second question man, is: What is one mindset shift or breakthrough you you have made that you can share that's allowed you to level up in your life, in your marriage, and in your business? One one breakthrough, one mindset. I believe transformation is overrated, but tweaking is essential. Most people try to, if something's not working, they go in a totally different direction, even though intuitively and what they are naturally good at, that's where they should be. They trusted themselves because it didn't work the first time they tend to just give it up. So I always tell people, tweak yourself to success, not transform yourself to success. I believe it's the biggest mind shift that anyone can make. is what strategy tactic or tool do you use to make sure that you have clarity in your life i actually posted this the other day and i couldn't believe how fast it took off i actually have i take a 100 intentional breaths every single day every morning to my start i don't sit there and do the wim hof method of slaying there I, you know, as, as a father, as a business owner, as an investor, I don't have a, enough time to do that. So every morning when I'm just walking around, I just take real deep breath in, real deep breath out, going to work out, getting Lincoln ready for school. You know, the first couple minutes, I'm, you know, writing emails to people to start my day. But those 100 intentional breaths, I'll tell you something. There is just, it really has been a power, it has a powerful euphoria effect. And I know that nootropics and different sleeping and, and I, I've tried them all and I know there's a lot of value in it, but man, I've never been able to get past that 100 breath. So for everybody here, even if you just start with 10 really intentional deep breaths every day, you'll find a very different way of feeling and thinking that your mind takes over from there. That's very interesting, man. Actually, I heard 
in the other day that, you know, as, as baby deep into our lungs, right, and, and, and breathe freely. But as we grow up, you know, with everything that's happening, you know, the problems, concerns, worries, we adopt this shallow breathing. Yeah. And, and, and that's where disease is and getting sick and uh, that's the thing that works. I lose you again. Did you hear me? I can hear you now. You're good. <laughs> uh, um, what is one habit? Okay, cool. What is one habit? Says? What? Sorry, can you repeat the question again? Okay. What do you think? Alex, let's see. Let's see. Am I back? Then you're back. You're back. Okay. Go for it. All righty. So I, I was saying, what is one habit that you the more one most important habit that you feel has contributed greatly to your success? Compassion and trying to make everybody's day better. No matter the conversation, no matter the person, it could be the person at the grocery store, it could be a podcast episode, it could be talking with one of my VIP clients, it could be talking to my son, but am I making that person's day better through that interaction? And my best habit. Cool, cool man. And then the last one, 30 second thoughts on tracking and measuring and having KPIs in your life and your marriage and in your business. I heard something about KPIs. So here's, here's what I would say about KPIs and metrics. What doesn't get measured doesn't get changed. The biggest thing though, is understanding is the metric that you're measuring applied to the milestone that you're trying to achieve. So I always use this as an example. So in business, I say, what is the only metric that comes before a sale? And the metric before the sale is the offer. The only way that the person can get a sale is if you make an offer. Do they say yes or no to the offer? So instead of saying, hey, I got to measure this metric or that metric, are you measuring your offers? How many offers and how much are those offers combined? And how does that translate into the ultimate final metric? It's the same thing, I think, in any aspect of your life. You know, for me, it's, I don't measure it, but every single day I'm done at five. I mean, I, I, and I, it doesn't matter. Whoever I'm on the call with, I'm like, I'm done at five because I'm picking up my son. I'm spending a couple hours with him before he goes to bed because that's important. And I don't think of it as a metric. I think of it as a necessity. So the more that we can create metrics that are necessities, ultimately, we don't have to measure them so much. Ultimately, we try to create either A, personal records in our business or B, they become our lifestyle. Awesome, man. Um, that's great that's that's a great insight and i apologize for everything that went on during this episode right but um you're good you're, you're good man i think it's just it's that's life of technology sometimes so um you probably will get both these i'm gonna make sure that i get this fixed i just moved it so you know what's happening um uh yeah so man man alex i think i'm losing you again let's see you there there
Go ahead. <laughs> if you can talk. Oops, I think I lost you. Alex, yeah, Alex, last thing, man. Uh, can you hear me? Yep, go yes. for it. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I love everything that you said, and I really like, you know, what you're all about, where can I find you and we're going to get more of you? Sure. So for you and your audience, you can always go to my website at imabornleader.com. But I spoke earlier today about success DNA and finding your leadership archetype. And if you're somebody in here right now that's an incredible father and you're trying to do everything that you possibly can for your family by trying to grow your business, what I'd like to do is I'd like to give you a free, definite, free gift and it's called our success DNA course. And truthfully, we actually don't sell courses. We sell transformation experiences. experiences. And what and I want to make sure you understand is that, that this is actually the an, uh, assessment. It helps you analyze, discover your success DNA, and ultimately, more importantly, how do you build a business around that? Just because you spent the time here on this day, and I know so many people ultimately maybe sometimes struggle with uh, figuring out what they should be doing in their business, what they should be doing in, inside their businesses. I want to give you gifts, this gift for free. So if you go to imabornleader.com slash Alex Ramirez, that is your gift for free. It's something I only give to our higher end clients, but I want to give that to you. And the reason why is because I really believe right now you have an unfair competitive advantage. It's you. It's you, the leader. And hopefully this tool will help to get you closer to using that unfair competitive advantage to get to where you want to go with your business, your life, and as a father. So again, I'm a born leader.com forward slash Alex Ramirez. Hey, Alex, I recorded it. Thank you for watching the Gentleman Success, Happiness and Fulfillment Talk podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with one friend, leave us a comment and let us know. 99% of people never leave a review or comment, but we love and are very thankful with the 1% of you who do. If there's something or someone you want to see on this podcast, Send me a message on Instagram at Alex underscore Ramirez1020 and let me know. I say thank you for that. I have an amazing surprise for each and every one of you who does take the time to leave us a comment or review on YouTube or one of the major podcasting platforms 